Hello, my internet friends. Today we're looking at a 2023 Marin Headlands 1. The Headlands 1 is the lower price of a two Headlands uh, lineup from Marin. So Marin Headlands 1 looks like that. Headlands 2, fancy bike, looks like that. So as the base version, this guy is 33.69 Canadian or 25.99 US dollars. This is a 21 and a half pound carbon fiber, full carbon frame and fork gravel bike. It is sort of like a continuation of Marin's Gestalt X line, which is their aggressive geometry one by specific aluminum framed bikes. But this is where we get into a little bit more traditional looks and a little bit of a higher uh, sort of higher quality feel look um, and obviously material on this. So in today's video, I'm going to show you some of the close-ups of the details on this bike, talk about specifications, talk about who would maybe consider this bike, um, my likes, and I'll see if I can figure out a dislike on this bike. I will admit that my personal bike is one of those right now, and that is after having ridden the last generation of the Headlands 2 for the last three years. So when you see a bike shop owner um, pick something, A, that's a good sign. When you see a bike shop owner pick the new version of an old bike, that sort of says that that bike is doing something special and uh, is maybe something to consider. So this video, like all of our videos on the Bike Bros YouTube channel, we try and give you some honest advice on bikes. If, uh, if you're into that sort of stuff, consider subscribing. Uh, I wouldn't ding that bell button because I find that annoying myself, but subscribe. Um, give us comments, ask us questions down below, and we try and be as helpful as possible in your bicycle research, or if you're just a bike nerd that likes to know what's going on. So let's get into this bike. So as I mentioned, Headlands 1, one of two Headlands models, 33.69 Canadian dollars, 21 and a half pounds. So a pretty reasonable weight, it's not ultra light, but it's also one of the best priced full carbon gravel bikes on the market. And I would say if you're looking at bikes with uh, Shimano GRX hydraulic disc brakes, it is definitely amongst the better priced of uh, carbon gravel bikes out there. So one of the things that makes this bike special is that carbon frame, on here, it is a one by specific frame, meaning because of the shaping that they've got at the bottom of the seat tube here and the clearance that they have down there, there is no allowance to run a front derailleur. So if a front derailleur is something extremely important to you, I would say perhaps look at things like the Giant Revolt who have taken an opposite stance on their bikes and they are huge proponents of two by drivetrains on their gravel bikes. Um, so there's that guy there. This frame is special enough that Marin is offering it as a frame only, and that comes in a pretty awesome uh, color combo too, if you're looking to build something up. So let's get into the details on here. To start with, the Shimano GRX 812 rear derailleur. I would consider a GRX 812 rear derailleur to be somewhat synonymous to an Altegra level rear derailleur. So we're looking at high quality, designed for 11 speed drivetrains. It includes having a clutch, which is that little switch right there. What a clutch will do is when you're riding in really bumpy terrain, it gives you a really, really pronounced spring in there. That is your clutch. Um, and so that is basically something that has been pulled over from the mountain bike Shimano lineup uh, and added to their gravel uh, components and that makes a lot of sense obviously gravel is going to be really bumpy and that clutch is going to help calm the chain when we're going over really bumpy surfaces the reason that they give you this off switch here which takes you back to just a regular amount of tension in the clutch there is so that if you're taking off your wheel for a flat or whatever uh, you're not battling all of that tension but in general you'll want to ride with that in the on position and if you ever forget, you'll actually notice when you're using your shifters that the feel is really light and that will be your feedback that, hey, I forgot to engage my clutch. The cassette 
Its range, I said it's 11 speed. Its range is from 11 to 42 teeth. And it is the CSM 8000, which I think is actually considered sort of like a, an SLX um, one by uh, drivetrain cassette. So a high quality cassette there for you with all of Shimano's famous ramping, which gives you really nice shifting quality. We I just realized as I go to edit this video, one thing I missed out on is talking about the one by drivetrain. The most common question about these is, will that be enough range to do the kind of riding I want to do? And do I need to go two by drivetrain to get a broader range? Yes, this is a slightly more limited range of gears with this 1142 compared to the modern two by drivetrains that are being offered on gravel bikes. A couple of years ago, if you actually looked at the difference between the highest and lowest uh, gears possible on this, um, versus a 2 by, you would have been awfully close. The modern 2 bys do have a bit more range, but I do still think there is a big upside and there is still a lot of practicality to the one by drivetrain. I chose the one by for personal uh, use because I find this combination of narrow wide chain rings, a clutch, 1142 gave me a quiet experience less chance of bouncing um, chains off of chain rings here. And front derailleurs, I find if you're gonna become really frustrated with a part on any modern drop bar bike or any bike in general, front derailleurs are a great source of frustration. So you lose that frustration, you get a really quiet bike with less chance of your chain bouncing off. Um, the downside is your steps between your gears. If you're somebody who comes from the road cycling world and really wants their cadence to stay within a few RPM of ideal always, your steps between gears here become a little bit bigger. Um, and then your overall range, you'll end up with a little bit easier than the easy gear here and a little bit harder than the hard gear here. So you're gonna spin out at a slightly lower speed. I would say in this current setup, if you're happy riding anything from 6 kilometers an hour to 50 kilometers an hour, you'll be happy with this sort of one by drivetrain. So I just wanted to clarify one by versus two by for drivetrains. We have a KMC chain on here. You'll see mixed responses on KMC chains. Some people really don't like to see them on a Shimano bike and claim that they're cause for some issues. Um, I would kind of say, yeah, sort of. Um, I'd always love to see a high-end Shimano chain on a bike, but I don't see it being a massive detriment at least. So um, not like a concern that is the first thing you're gonna do when you buy the bike is replace the chain. Shifting is gonna be decent. Um, rims that we have on here, they're a disc specific Eyeleted rims, so as we see around the nipples there, there's eyelets. That helps you to basically build the wheel in a nice way and gives you um, just a little bit better quality than when you don't see an eyelet, eyelet at the nipple. Helps to sort of uh, reduce real um, focus pressure from your spoke nipples against your rim and helps your nipples turn a bit more easily. Um, Presta valves. This is also a tubeless ready rim set, that TLE on this Schwalbe tire. That means that that's a tubeless easy tire. The rims are tubeless compatible. This is the valve off of an inner tube. So it comes with tubes, but if you choose to, you could set it up tubeless. The reason that you would do that is if you really are riding in rougher conditions a lot, it allows you to ride a lower tire pressure and really get that little last bit of performance out of your tires, having them really holding the ground properly and giving you a nice smooth ride. So that could be the other way that you uh, justify going tubeless is just because of ride quality. This particular bike is using Schwalbe G1 all around tires, which is kind of this like little micro round kind of tread on here. This is a surprisingly uh, good versatile uh, tire. I had the exact same tire on 
my headlands for the last couple of years and found it to be a really good crossover, something that when you're riding on the road, pavement, feels quite efficient. Um, but when you do get into a little bit looser stuff, it's certainly not a Maxxis Minion or an Asagai or anything, but it gives you a little bit of extra, extra traction. So I think as a stock tire on a bike like this, um, it makes a lot of sense. As we look at frame details, we'll see here that we have through axle on the rear axle. That's going to give you just a little bit more stout connection of your wheel to the frame. Um, under heavy braking, you're not going to be able to shift a hub um, within the frame and sort of yank it out of the dropouts or anything. We have the same thing on the front axle, a through axle there again. So we have some nice thought put into the hub frame fork interface on either ends. And of course we see threaded mounts there if you were putting on fenders or um, kicking it old school and putting a pannier rack on there. This little removable arch at the seat stays removable with those Allen keys there. That gives you another mount there for if you are putting fenders on this bike. Um, you would probably or potentially be doing some modification because our space with this shaped seat tube here doesn't leave you piles of room. So depending on the tire size you're running, you're either customizing a fender and chopping it off around there or if you're on the smaller end of tire sizes, you do have just down there, right behind our bottom bracket, there is a threaded hole so that you can uh, attach something all the way down there. One theme that you will see on this bike is that you have tons and town, tons of mounting points for bags, bottles, pumps, whatever you choose. Um, it's it kind of affects the uh, looks of the bike. The one thing I found is uh, like once you have all the stuff mounted on the bike that you want, you can just take off the remaining bolts. You can find little rubber plugs that make those look pretty seamless. Um, at some bike shops, they'll just have some extras around that come on stock bikes. Um, and especially, especially on a smaller bike up in this re region here, if you're not using something like a bento box on there, I would suggest uh, especially doing that at that point there because that could be uh, snagging on some important bits on your body if you ever had a fast emergency step off the front of the bike. Uh, tying together with that mention about pannier racks, we do have behind the, uh, the seat tube here, we do have mounts as well. You'll notice we have quite good tire clearance on this bike and it's equaled down here. In some cases you see bike companies giving you good clearance up here and then when you look around the chain stays themselves they don't actually give you any more room for for tire clearance. Uh, these particular tires, these uh, Schwalbe G1 all-rounds are a 40C tire. The, the spec on Marin's website says that this bike is supposed to be coming with a 44C V-tire um, that I don't think we've seen any stock show up with that yet. So we're still at the tail end of some uh, shortages on bits and pieces. And Marin also says that the maximum for tire clearance on this bike is a 45C. Um, and that's in the 700C. They do say that this bike is compatible with 650C wheels, in which case you would want to run near the maximum size of 650 by 50 to help to keep the, uh, the bike riding at close to a similar height off the ground and to not lower your bottom bracket, especially too much. As we talk about clearance on things, on the front wheel here, if you were using this way outside its comfort zone, I would say that you could uh, step up beyond that 45C max and get up to a 50C tire in the front there and still have no issues with clearance. Um, as mentioned, we do have, while we're at the fork there, we have three mounting spots there. That could be for 
uh, an anything cage, something like that, if you're using this bike as a lightweight road inspired bike packing bike. The seat post on this bike is 27.2 millimeters. This on the Headlands 1 is a standard rigid post, um, but if you chose to, you do have mounting um, or holes in the frame so that you can put a dropper post on this. Um, though I would say if a dropper was of interest, that's your cable port up here near the head tube um, for your dropper cable. I would say if a dropper was high on your list of things to put on a bike like this, definitely consider going to the Headlands one because it is equipped with that dropper out of the box, which also gives you a left hand lever, which uh, activates that dropper while the lever on a Headlands one doesn't have that ability and to add the left hand dropper lever would that and the uh, the dropper would easily make up the difference between a headlands one and a headlands two marin does a pretty nice job on these stock saddles i spent a couple of years without changing out a stock saddle and found that in uh, real world riding it was Good enough that I didn't uh, feel the need to, to switch it out. Um, we'll see if I can jam my camera back here. Brakes are hydraulic. Rotors are 160 millimeters. The brakes are uh, 400 level brake on here. And then the lever shifter units are the RX 600. So the big thing that we see between these and when we go with a full RX 800 series um, lever and brake unit is that once you step up to the next level, which is once again on that Headlands 2, you get servo wave within the brake lever, which actually helps to provide a more powerful um, brake setup than what is on this particular bike. So in general I would say this is a very capable bike but if you're tempted by things like the dropper post that's maybe telling you that you're looking to venture off pavement that much more into maybe some stuff that's pushing the limits of the bike a bit more. If that's your idea it's very much worthwhile um, looking at the headlands Two. So just keep that in mind. The cranks on this bike, these are a no-name, pretty simple forged alloy crank, four-bolt spider, narrow wide, um, no-name, 40-tooth chainring on here. The bottom bracket is a threaded external BB um, bottom bracket. So for home mechanics, that is always a nice thing because it means if you want to do any BB work, you're not punching out bearings and then having to get a press to put new press fit bearings in there. You can see that those are a pinch bolt style crank. A crank in this sort of region, I don't think you're gonna experience anything except for the fact that this is a tad heavier um, than going up in quality. Um, so it's not a huge performance thing, but it probably does contribute um, to the fact that this bike is just a tad heavier and the next model up. We'll just look at some of these details on the frame. Something that is really hard to pick up on in a lot of pictures and stuff is the way they do this diamond fade from the silver into the uh, black raw clear coated carbon. It's, when you look down at it, it actually is just such a nice sort of a top tube graphic detail to look at. The same thing happens on the down tube here. We have very subtle diamonds that take us from that black clear coat down into the sparkly silver down here. Ooh, look at that decal, so classy. Um, handlebars are flared, although not excessively flared. So the flare on a handlebar, you'll see, see some things out there like Salsa's different chipper series of bars that get super, super flared and um, get a little bit ridiculous. 
Um, in this case here, I would say the whole story of this bike is saying this bike is probably going to be used um, more on pavement or less uh, chunky terrain, less on single track. Once you get into wider handlebars, um, dropper seat posts, stuff like that, it's starting to uh, imply that you're going to take your bike um, a little bit further off the beaten path. To give you an idea on these handlebars, the frame that we're looking at here is a 58. So a 58 in this case would be something appropriate for somebody, I would say 6162 is ideal. These handlebars are 44 centimeters wide at the center of the hoods. They're 52 centimeters wide uh, at the drops there. So that gives you four centimeters of flare on each side. You have about nine centimeters of forward reach here and 12 centimeters of drop. So that would be considered a shallow drop, um, meaning that you can actually comfortably use the drops way more than a lot of, uh, a lot of road drops. Um, and then shallow in reach here just helps you to be able to get on the hoods and be comfortable there a lot as well. As part of the geometry on this bike, they don't go super stretched out on the frame for a given size, but they do shorten up the stem length. So shortening up that and putting on wider handlebars helps to keep you with fairly neutral handling. And for from a comfort perspective, comparing this to a 58 centimeter road bike, your seated reach to be able to ride in your hoods is going to be a little bit more compact a little bit more comfortable on this. Overall geometry numbers aren't wacky. This is a tad slacker at a head tube angle, like in the neighborhood of half a degree to a degree slacker than some of the mainstream bikes out there, Specialized Trek Norco in this category. Seat tube angle in the neighborhood of maybe a half a degree to a degree steeper. So this is taking mountain bike um, geometry concepts into uh, consideration. You have a fairly tall head tube on here. So this is one once more a thing that is making this a bit more relaxed handling, a bit more comfortable bike for you. As we get up to the front end, same rim width, same tire. I mentioned that clearance at the fork. This is what those GRX lever hood shifters look like. It's they're really sleek looking. It uh, For a low $3,000 bike, I think this is uh, just one of those places where it just looks like pretty fancy looking stuff on here. The bar tape is pretty rubbery, so it's going to help keep your hands from bouncing off. And it does have a reasonable amount of cushion in there, so you're not going to feel like you have to go out and spend a fortune on lizard skin bar tape right off the bat. So that is the Marin Headlands won a 3399 or 2599, um, 3369 Canadian, 2599 USD bike. An awesome bike for anybody looking for a gravel bike. I would say on something like this bike, this is going to suit commuters. It's going to suit roadies looking to get into uh, gravel and want something that feels somewhat familiar because it's not super out there like some of the massive tired bikes with uh, mega huge handlebars. It's also because of the geometry and everything, it suits mountain bikers looking for a capable drop bar bike that they can join a casual road club with while also going and exploring some basic single track or gravel. Uh, gravel bikes in general really do just widen the amount of trails, roads, places that you can ride if you want to disappear for a couple hours after work and just want to spin your legs out, have some fun, get some exercise. Um, the big thing I find with these is it really entices you to attack corners. You really enjoy going around corners fast and it also keeps you peering out of the peripheral vision, looking for places that you can go where you really shouldn't on a drop bar bike, but the bike is just that much fun to challenge yourself. Let me know, know what you think of the Marin Headlands 1. I'm a huge fan, like I said, Headlands 2, 
a bike just like mine right there. I will be doing a review on that in the next week or two. Um, but for now, this is the Headlands one, an awesome 2023 model from our friends at Marin.